Rockfish Hitch Grip Tutorial is brought to you by Dream Glove Co. <laughs> Discount code Robbie. Here with Andrew Gross, gonna go over his uh, Vulcan. Are you gonna call yours Vulcan Swange or Vulcan Change? Vortex Vulcan. No, that's mine. Third option. That's mine. Yours? I already had the, I already uh, coined it. You coined it? I coined it. No, I said that first. Uh, you said You're it first. You're lucky you have a big audience. But uh, by the time you said it, you didn't have the Vulcan. Fine, I'll just go Vulcan then and be right, a regular so person. For starters, I'm gonna show you guys my grip. It's just around the horseshoe, pinky on this seam, and I get my index finger off of it, thumb's gonna press on that seam. Now ideally for me to have success with this, I wanna feel as the ball's coming through my hand that it's coming through these two fingers, but instead of having it come off the middle finger, and this is, might not be what's happening in reality, but I feel like I wanna have the ring finger create that side spin, like almost like a gyroscopic. So you're trying to get side spin on it to create Yeah, I, I, I feel like if I can get like the opposite of like reverse bullet spin, then I feel like I can so stay you, through you, and extend through it. Are you trying to get it to move arm side then? Yeah, I'm okay. trying to mirror my, my cutter in a sense, but okay. the opposite direction. So in, in my head, I'm trying to think as much down action as I can, because being a, a sidearm guy, it's always a, a struggle to get lefties out. So I have this slider. This fastball. Something that goes down on the plate is an out pitch for me for a lefty. Mine's essentially the same grip as Robbie's, except instead of my fingers being down low like that, I put all my fingers up on the side. This thumb on this seam right here, and sometimes playing around with putting it in the middle, letting it float. See, I don't, I don't that, that feels so weird. I mean, but, but for me, I'm thinking more like, I'm trying to make this as splittery as possible yeah. to make it have depth. Well, I don't really need it to mirror my sinker because my sinker is basically yeah. a lot of people's change-ups. So, so you're uh, putting the thumb on, on that? On this seam, but then in my mind, I think, what do I need to do to create equal distribution of pressure yeah. across the baseball? And that is put the, put the thumb in the middle of the baseball because you have 50% distribution, 50%, and then in the middle equals it out. But up here, they might create it to have a little bit more pronation and spin the opposite direction. I don't know, I've played around with a couple other thoughts I might try today, whether it's like floating, do the opposite side? floating this finger or, yeah, people that have smaller fingers, might be easier to do it on the opposite side. Easier to kind of like wedge your fingers in there. And what are you thinking like as you throw it? Because you said the other day. So I learned in college throwing a splitter. I threw a splitter similar to that with like these fingers, like right here. I learned that you want to create like what you feel like is a fan in your own head. So no supination, no pronation, just here all the way through. And that's the same thing for sidearm coming through here, just all the way through without pronating or without supinating. So that's what's going to create a straight down drop for a side armor is just to create no pronation, no supination, just go right through it. Like there's a big fan in the middle of your hand. You're just for me, I feel like the best ones that I throw, I'm like almost in a sense choking it and like engulfing it with my entire hand. Well, like I feel like in the sense of most pitches, the more you hold it in your fingers, the faster it's gonna be and the less movement it's gonna be. Yeah. I pre-grip this pitch with lefties. I wedge this pitch in my fingers against my leg before the hitter steps in the box and I switch based off of that. It's pretty wedged deep in, in, in my hand. Kill spin, kill speed, all that kind of stuff. I would say like the more, like the deeper it is in there, and the more you kind of essentially choke it, it's gonna be harder to command at first. But like, I could throw this, I feel like with this grip, I could throw it as hard as I can, as much arm speed as possible, and like, it won't go hard. I've also tried like getting it a lot lighter in my hand, a little bit more finger tippy, if you but will. But I feel like people with splits and, grip it deep. Yeah, and then this, this like, I could command this better because it was like looser, but like the movement profile completely just. I feel like a splitter is the movement, the movement over, Man, right? And why don't you like throwing a splitter? Why'd you get away from throwing a splitter if the splitter movement profile I mean, is what you want it was, to throw? It was college, less developed as a pitcher. You know, did, was just trying to get my main two pitches as a reliever down, which yeah. is fastball slider. I mean, this pitch worked, but throwing it from sidearm, it's, you know, like I said, going back to like equal distribution of pressure, it's pretty off balance. So uh, I like this one a lot more because it creates equal pressure on both my fingers. I feel like I'm able to get it on the plate better and, and, and leave it arm side less often. Well, there you have it, folks. And now tell everyone where they could message you to get tips. Message me on Andrew on, on Instagram, Andrew Gross33. I'll try to answer as many of your questions as possible. But for Vulcan Vortex questions, <laughs> That's Robbie mine. Rowe. This is a Vulcan session anyways. Vulcan session. Vulcan session. Good thing we got a freaking title for the YouTube video already. Vulcan sesh, shout out J.O. Glove Company. All Vulcans from now out. Yeah. Bye, you're done. That gets me excited. And you don't need to do anything more than that. This is me on the mound, by the way. I know.
I seen it. <laughs> Don't care what it looks like to the fans. I just want to, uh, want to have a good. That one just got, I just got a little bit lazy on. I can kind of tell when you're going to throw a good one versus a bad one because of your front shoulder. Opens? Yeah, your front shoulder, it's like a little, it, to me, it's night and day, like difference. Yeah. Did that one move? 100%. I feel, like that, I feel like that got a little, a little early, too early pronation. You know how on like splitters, you try to just keep it as like neutral as possible? I feel like that one got a little bit this way. No, but I think the pronation aspect of your Vulcan allows it for it to look like a four seamer. You think pronating it makes it look more like a four seam? Yeah, I don't think you have to consciously do it because you're going to do it regardless. Wow, this, this makes my fingers sore. I know. That's the one. Yeah, that is. That's a swing and miss pitch. Doesn't matter if you're a righty or a lefty. It's going to play off of the, the four seam. Yeah. Let me throw one of those like up and in. Yeah, like right there. I mean, that just... So after throwing the Vulcan, that just seems like it stays up. It does. And that gets me really, really But that's excited. the first thing I noticed was that the difference between those two pitches in movement and then how they look, very similar. Yeah, let's tunnel a couple more of those. Cool. Like one Vulcan. Yeah. And then we'll go up and in with the four seam. Yeah. I like that. I really like that. And then can you throw a slider that starts say, here? I was gonna say either back foot or up in the zone slider. I would want it to start like, so the Vulcan starts like right here. The fastball kind of starts right here. You can even throw the slider right I here. I would just say slider, slider in half then would be, would be the move. That's that a homer. That's kind of a cuttery one. This is a Vulcan session anyways. Vulcan session. Vulcan session. Good thing we got a freaking title for the YouTube video already. Vulcan session, shout out JL Glove Company. That's, that's good, man. One more four seam. And I want to end on a Vulcan, then we'll call it. That one's the one that gets hit. Yeah, but it's kind of interesting how like your four seamer, if it's above the belt line, it'll stay up. But if it's like below that, it'll go. I mean, I could throw my four seam and it stays this way, but I get a lot of takes on sinkers up too because they look like they're way higher. Like right. Ab above right. the belt and they catch the top of the zone. All right, we'll, we'll go two more, four seam, up, up and in. Vulcan nice. off of that line. Say Maybe that's like a, a ball, right? Like now you're 1-0, you can throw the Vulcan. Like a like, freeze Vulcan right here. Yeah. Bro, the, the movement, session. the movement on it is um, like very surprisingly late. That's what I need. You know, I mean, since I only throw like, you know, 86, 88, late movement is huge because yeah. the velocity isn't always there, oh. but late movement is what gets me strikeouts. And That's going to get you, that, I mean, I think it's going to be a nasty strikeout pitch to righties too. You think so? I, I just have big reserves. Just because, about, just because I think it like, obviously your just, slider moves more, but I think that pitch holds the plane of a fastball longer than any other, than your slider or your cutter or your sweeper or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I would just, I would need that up and in target to righties too, because it's going to be really easy for me to miss arm side and just like, you know, yeah, throw that, it behind him or hit him or something like the that. The arm side miss is like um, a mechanical mishap because of your eyes, right? So like, if you just tell your catcher like, hey, if we throw yeah. a change up, especially for the first few since it's new, just do me a favor and, and act like we're going elevated glove side fastball. I mean, you know, like that's the kind of stuff that I do with like sinkers. You know, yeah. whenever I get tired and my sinker starts bleeding out, I'll just tell my catcher yeah. like, cause I, I never have that issue to righties. Yeah. But to lefties, it's like there's yeah. nobody on that side. There's so, so much can, room to like fly open. I can just, you know, yeah. attack less, you know, in my yeah. head. Same thing for me and my cutter arm side. Like it's really easy for me to throw my front door cutter to a righty. <laughs> but yet when I get a lefty, I can't like, I'm not get as good backdoor in it. Like oh, backdoor. So it's the same pitch, but the sights give me a different physical sensation, right? Where like the righty allows me to stay through it and get extension. Do you and, think like, there's also some, some, some stuff that like, you're withholding because you don't want it to leak back over the plate to a lefty? I mean, you could I mean, say that about a righty too, though. Yeah, you could. Maybe, I don't know. As a righty, you're kind of used to seeing that, that trajectory of, you know, at you to coming over the plate, yeah. but not at like 80 mi 80, 88 miles an hour. That's, that's the difference. 
So I I, I kind of just want to see you throw the Vulcan like one outing 50% of the time and like a little get, sack Vulcan just get feedback from righties and lefties alike oh throw it to both sides yeah <laughs>